Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to Innovation Guelph Presents Toolkit Tuesday. I'm Adelaide Manley, Program Manager uh, here with Innovation Guelph for our startup program, and I'm very excited to be hosting this call with all of you today. I would first like to welcome our two friendly American Sign Language interpreters whose time today is graciously provided in kind by Assign, Samantha and Liz. Thank you both for joining us and thank you to Assign. Thank you as well to Sarah Douglas, Program Coordinator with Innovation Guelph, who's supporting all of the behind the scenes and Zoom webinar elements with us today. I would also like to thank our corporate sponsors, Ernst & Young, Reese Informatica, and Invest in Guelph. We're very grateful for their support. Before beginning the session today, I would like to give recognition to the land that Guelph is on. We acknowledge that many others here today may, may be on a different territory, so we invite and encourage each of you to give recognition to the land that you occupy today and every day. As we gather for today's event, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. As an organization in this city, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. Today, we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation of the Anishinaabeg peoples on whose traditional territory we are meeting. Today's webinar is called How to Lead in Plain Sight So You Are Seen, Heard, Found, and Hired with Danielle Jaworski. In case some of you are new to Innovation Wealth, a quick background on us. Innovation Guelph is one of 17 regional innovation centers in Ontario, and while we are located in Guelph, we serve the entire region of Southern Ontario and have one national program. This means that while most of our clients are relatively close by, we do have clients in British Columbia, all the way to Nova Scotia, and throughout Ontario. We work with our clients, supporting them throughout multiple stages of business growth, from startup to scale up, with lots of programs and workshops, networking opportunities and events, but now, more Danielle. With a microbiology degree and paralyzing fear of the camera, the last place you'd expect Danielle Jaworski to be is running her own business and hosting a TV show. A fear of being visible in her first business at 40 resulted in her having to return to corporate, which became the catalyst to the work she does today. Her work as a visibility strategist and consultant is focused on helping to make the process of becoming easier so founders can grow their businesses and create the impact they imagine faster. This is achieved by gaining clarity, developing a plan and taking actions that are aligned with, with who leaders are and where they are in their business and visibility journeys. Should you have any questions for Danielle today, please do use the Q&A feature in your banner below. We will monitor and ask your questions when the right moment appears during the presentation or at the end during organized question and answer periods. I'll now hand the virtual screen over to you, Danielle. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Adelaide, for that introduction. And again, thank you, Sarah, and our interpreters, Samantha and Liz, as well, for such a welcoming environment. So welcome. Welcome, everybody. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are Zooming in from today or watching the replay. I'm really excited to be here talking about, at the end of the day, visibility, how to be much more visible in your business so you are seen and heard because at the end of the day you want to grow your business you want to be found and hired so that you can do what it is you feel called to do right now in your business in your life okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share the screen so we can get this started adelaide if you can give me a thumbs up if you're able to see please wonderful thank you so welcome everybody to this conversation. And I call this a conversation because it's really going to be us having a conversation together. If you've ever been on a webinar with me before, I'm all about the conversation, the collaboration, and making this really a two-way dialogue. Use the chat, ask your questions in the chat. I'm going to be asking different reflection, reflection questions throughout the next about 45 minutes to really get you engaged in thinking about your visibility, your visibility journey a little bit differently, so that you can get a lot more clarity in how you want to be showing up and being visible in your business, a plan that feels aligned to who you are and where you are in your business journey, and then to take action, inspired or strategic action to get you moving forward and, and growing your business. So as we get started, where let's 
this, check out this chat function right off the bat. So where are you zooming in from today? So are you in Ontario? Are you in Guelph? So use the chat, let us know. Where are you zooming in from today watching this? I am here, my home is here in the lovely Guelph with my family, my husband, my two kids and two dogs which if the doorbell goes off for an Amazon delivery, you may hear in the background. So wonderful, lots of people in Guelph here on the conversation today. We've got Kitchener, we've got Toronto, Waterloo. I love this. Thank you, everyone. So great warm up to the chat uh, because that's what it is. We're having conversations. And I think Ottawa, fantastic. I love that. Love that. Okay, so let's get started. Who's ready? To get started, to learn how to be more visible, to be seen and heard in your business, give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat and we will get started. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you for sharing. And Sarah, thumbs up, love it. Okay, okay, let's get going. Okay, so as we get started, let's reflect now on being visible, what you're doing right now currently in your business. What is your favorite way to be visible, to be seen, or to be heard by your ideal audience? You can reflect on that, write it down. If you've got a pen and paper or you like to use the notes in your phone, write that down or feel free to share in the chat. What is your favorite way right now to be visible in your business? I can share that I love the camera, love the camera. As, as you might be able to tell, it wasn't always that way though. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in a bit. So I'm hearing writing, your favorite way to show up Sandra is in writing. Yes, yes, just, you can do lots of different ways. Newsletters, Instagram posts, Facebook, yes, social media. It's hard not to be on social media for your business today. There's lots of different ways. So really what, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is there's so many different ways for you to be seen and heard. Sometimes that can be overwhelming, but really to show up in ways that feel good to grow your business. When you find ways to be visible that are aligned to who you are, it's much easier to overcome the fear of putting yourself out there and to take the consistent steps forward to, to be seen. So networking, that's a great one too. Networking, especially in person, because there's a lot more in-person networking happening now. And I'm so happy about that. Okay. So the next question is, how? How do you want to be more visible in your business? So you've shared what's your favorite way to be visible now. So just kind of sit back, reflect, and think about how do you want to be more visible? Do you want to be visible in a very specific way? Do you want to be more visible in person? And how you want to be more visible, this is going to be completely unique to you. You can share in the chat, how do you, how do you want to be more visible? Or again, reflect and think about it. Maybe you haven't really thought about what that next visibility step is. I'm loving all oh, trade shows and conferences, how you want to be more visible. Yes, those are big ones. It's in person. You can't hide from conversations because you are right there and they're impactful. Great for building your networks and connections. Absolutely. So yeah, so looking at your favorite way to be visible. And now we're going to start from how do you want to be more visible? And we're going to grow on that. What I really, the message I really want to get across today is becoming more visible in your business. It can feel good. It does not have to feel icky. It can be easier. It does not have to seem so hard. And it can be done faster. And it all comes down to figuring out what works for you, what feels good to you, what feels right, right what feels like that next best step for you. So it's completely unique to you. So the three steps that we're going to cover today is really clarity, plan, and action. And clarity is really all about helping you to get clear on where it is that you're going. What are, what are all these steps you're going to be taking? Where are they leading to? Creating a plan. And when you create a plan, it's all about intentional steps that feel aligned to who you are and where you are in your business and visibility journeys. Nobody else. 
it's your plan. And the last piece is the last step is taking action, taking consistent action, whether inspired or strategic. That is going to be what keeps creating momentum to compel and to move you forward so that you are seen and heard as in found and hired. Some takeaways for from today is you're going to learn about the role that mindset plays in being visible. Being visible isn't just about the strategies, the what in the how that you implement in your business. As a very foundation is a very strong mindset. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. You're going to be able to create better clarity around where it is you want to be moving forward in your business and how does that relate to visibility? You're going to be able to start to identify aligned steps and creating a plan, a visibility plan for you to work towards and achieve and then understand what next best, best steps to take. That's the action piece. So what to expect is open conversation. Like we've already started in the chat, I'm all about dialogue. If you have questions, feel free to ask them during the presentation so we can answer them as soon as possible. So you can have the clarity that you need before we move on to the next step. There's going to be reflection exercises, just like the questions I already asked. There's a lot of power in just sitting and pausing and reflecting on where have you been, where are you right now, and where do you want to be and move towards? And we're going to look at not just visibility problems, but we're gonna look at solutions and strategies that you could potentially even implement as soon as you leave this webinar and you can start implementing in your business as soon as possible. So who am I? Again, like Adelaide said at the very beginning, I'm Danielle Jaworski. I am a visibility consultant and strategist. I am where I am today as doing what I love to do, which is being in front of the camera and helping other founders to make the process of becoming more visible easier because I failed. In my first business at 40, I stepped out of corporate, no plan to create a business. The internet made the laptop lifestyle look so easy. And I thought, how hard can it be? Biggest understatement ever. And I'm sure as an entrepreneur, you, you're probably nodding, nodding in agreement and saying, yeah, it, it doesn't look necessarily as easy as, as it's always made out to be. So my failure to be visible in my first business, a fear of the camera, meant, meant that I couldn't be seen and heard. This meant at the end of the day, I could not be found and hired. This resulted in me returning to corporate, feeling a lot of shame and guilt and this massive sense of failure. But I flipped it around because it became the catalyst to me creating, pitching, producing, and then hosting the C-Suite on Rogers TV for three seasons. Being on TV, absolutely, I had to get over my, that, my fear of camera, of the camera, and that fear of visibility. Because at the end of the day, it was no longer about me being visible, it's about having this platform for others to be seen and heard. That's why I'm excited to help you to become more visible in your business, so that you can do what it is that you truly want to do right now uh, in your business. Okay, step number one is all about clarity. So what does being, being visible mean to you? It can mean a lot of different things to everybody. But if you wanna use the chat, share what does being visible mean to you? Does it mean showing up in a certain way? Does it mean showing up in certain places? Does it mean and really identify who you're showing up as and in front of? So what does being visible mean to you? It's gonna get a little bit of clarity around that. Wonderful, looking in the chat, being top of mind, yes, yes. So as soon as someone thinks, oh, I've got this problem, who do I know? Bam, yes, you're top of mind, absolutely. That's very visible, very visible. Wonderful, thank you for sharing that. So again, reflection, you can write it down, you can come back to this, if you're gonna get the replay, but kind of, kind of think about that. What does being visible mean to you? So often when I work with clients, it becomes being visible is those big, bold things, the getting on camera, being on TV, going on a podcast, but there's even those little, little visibility steps that can be super powerful in connecting you to your ideal audience. We've got other, what, is, what does visibility mean to you? We've got others showing up authentically to represent the value that you offer. I like this one, showing up consistently in various ways, a blog, podcast, 
social without the fear of being too much. And I like the quotations, the too much. And then getting in front of people who may see me as competition, but showing I'm there to help. Absolutely. That's what you're here to do as a business owner. You're here to help others to overcome their current problems and challenges in a way that only you can, even if there are uh, as a, a hundred, you know, thousands of copywriters, there's only one you and you bring extreme value and experience into what it is you do. And that is your difference. That's that unique value. It's you. Yes. Yes. So it's no me, no competition because you are you. There's only one you. So love that. Thank you for, for being so active in the chat and sharing. So clarity. So when you do not have clarity, there are some things that you that could be happening in your business. When you don't have it, you may see your actions as very, being very scattered, distracted. There's always this great new trend to kind of follow and, and kind of go down that, that rabbit hole. There becomes a lack of consistency in your business. It becomes much more challenging to show up or you may feel like you have to show up. There's no, oh, I get to show up. It's I have to show up. Because there's no deeper why as to why you're taking these steps to be more visible. Decision making can be slow or very hard because you're not sure where it is you're going. Why are you taking these steps? Why are you taking this strategy? Which means time, money, and energy can be spent with very little result or slow growth. So some strategies to increase the clarity around how you want to be visible. The first thing is, and I, when I work with clients, it becomes align your goals. You have business goals. Who also has a visibility goal? And you can share in the chat. Do you have a visibility goal connected to your business goals? If not, that could be something that you could look at doing because as you have a business goal, say your business goal is to increase your, your reach, your influence, which means maybe you're, you're growing your social media following to X number. What does that then mean from a visibility perspective from the end? How are you showing up when you have reached and attained that social media following of X followers? How are you showing up? How did you show up in order to create the consistency to get that following? So connecting your business goals to your visibility goals helps you to make sure that whatever steps you are taking, you're clear on where it is that you're going. Where are you starting right now? And where it is it that you're going? So you're not just achieving your business goal. You're showing up in a very consistent way. Reflect on your visibility goals and on why it's important to you. Why is it important for you to show up and be and be more visible at trade shows and conferences to be more visible on social media really connecting with that deeper why connecting with that deeper why from a mindset perspective that is that becomes your intrinsic motivation when things get hard when challenges show up in front of you all of a sudden things go bumping you know bump in the road that intrinsic motivator that deeper why can help you to push through and even maybe even you know, blow over the mindsets you have around the fears, the doubts, or the worries that you may have about showing up in that new way. And another way to create a lot of clarity is when you align your business goal to a visibility goal. And those visibility goals, they can be big. They can be that dream visibility goal that you want to achieve. Reverse engineer it, break it down into much smaller steps. These become much more tangible less overwhelming, and then they almost seem easier to take. And once you start taking each step, it creates the momentum towards, again, that final place of where you want to go, that clear end point. Whatever that is for you, it's one step at a time. Just going to take a peek at the chat. Yeah, it's getting in front of people. Yeah, issue, leaving the room for business to grow. Yes. Yeah, loving this. Yes, yes, that's the problem. Yes. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. The great, great conversations happening in, in the chat. And I wish I could read all of this online for camera. So that's the clarity piece. So you want to start with getting clarity. Where do you seen her and found and hired? Where are you going? Where are you right now in your business and visibility journey? And where are you going? 
not just in your business goals, connect that to a visibility goal. Where are you showing up? Who are you showing up at? Who are you showing up with and in front of? And then break that visibility goal down into smaller steps that are a little bit easier. You know, you don't necessarily need as much belief around to take them, but you can start taking those steps and creating momentum that you want in your business. Step number two is plan. We did clarity, and now we're going to talk about plan. The question for you, are you focused or flexible when making plans in your business? Are you, I'm going to, you've got this idea, you've got a goal, you've got your business goal, and you're just moving towards it and going. You see nothing else but your goal. Or are you a little bit more flexible? You see your end place where you want to be, yet you're kind of open as to how you get there. It's like for me living in Guelph, I, I, you know, if I go into Toronto, there's many, many different ways to get into Toronto. I used to work in Toronto years ago. And so the easiest way is I get on the 401 and I would drive down the highway. Sometimes though, you know, with traffic, I would, I would get off and I would take back roads. Sometimes they're more scenic roads. But at the end of the day, I was still getting to the same destination. How I got there, sometimes I was a little, I had to be flexible in order to get to that end place, but I still got to that end place. So are you focused or flexible when it comes to making your own plan? Ha, and I've got great comment, but both. And you can, you can be both as well. And sometimes you need to be a little bit of both. It's about integrating what works for you and being a little bit more open. Sometimes when we get so focused and this is exactly how I'm going to do it, there's great opportunities in the peripheral that could be exactly like what you need or the right person to talk to to make the next step easier. Sometimes being focused is good to get to the end of the destination, but it helps if you're able to shift your mindset around and just being open to receiving different information for more information to flow in that can potentially take you in different ways, take you in different you know, directions to get you to the same place. The goal is though, to make sure you're not going off the path from the, de the destination, and that you're still moving towards it. Another comment, I like to focus with a little bit of flexibility. My motto is goals are servants, not masters. I love that. That's a great motto. Goals are servants and not masters. And this really applies to visibility as well. So when it comes to plan, when you do not have a plan, there are some common signs that you may be, that you may have experienced in your business, or maybe you're kind of experiencing this right now. Time. When you're not having a time, you could be underestimating how much time a visibility strategy can take to implement. You, you could be in a last minute cycle or last minute or cycle of you know, feast and famine of, oh, oh my gosh, I, I forgot to send out my newsletter or I forgot to register for that call, conference. It just becomes kind of like a snowball effect of, of activity taken from the place where it's not ease, it's not flow because of, of time. So it's impacts time. We're not having a plan that impacts your time to do things in a more time structured way that you're not rushing. There's a lot more intention behind the, all the steps you're taking. When you don't have a plan, you may be feeling stuck, stuck on where to start, what's the next step or the how. When I work with clients, often when it comes to visibility, it becomes, well, I don't know where to start. Like, what's that next? What's, where do I start? I know what I want to do. I just don't know where to start or how. The biggest one is the how. When you have a plan, you're able to lay out what those next steps are to the best of your knowledge and ability. And if you're not having a plan, a third problem or you know, issue that could be that you have underlying actions and strategies. And this includes looking at what other people are doing. So a lot of time researching, what is everyone else doing who are seemingly getting the results that you want? And looking outside, well, what, sh what is someone else telling me I should do, again, should do? What are, what's popular now? What's the trend that everyone else seems to be using? So when you look externally for solutions and what everyone else is doing, you're not listening to yourself. So when you're, you're, stu you're stuck in your in business, you're not sure what that plan is, what that next step is, instead of looking outward for the answer and the solution, go within. 
go within and ask yourself the questions. Who do I know that can help me with this next step? Or who do I know that can help me to create this plan? And then what do I already know as well? And what, what feels good? At the end of the day, what feels good? Because you want to show up. And so often when I work with especially female founders, it becomes, I want to show up feeling authentic, whatever authentic means for them. That means having to listen to yourself and understanding what feels good to you. It could mean that you are taking a strategy that other people are, are using and you're reframing it. You're adopting it and adapting it to your skill set, to your strengths, that when you use it, you implement it, it feels better because you've infused it with who you are, that essence of who you are, and you're able to show up better because it's you. At the end of the day, you've it's something you've created to put yourself out there as well. So some strategies around plans. So we're not, again, not just talking about problems and challenges. We're going to be, we're getting some strategies. So for your visibility goals and steps, identify the gap. So we go back to almost the clarity step where, where are you right now? Where do you want to be from your business and visibility goals? And then identify what are your knowledge, your skill, or your awareness gaps? Again, it could be towards your big visibility goal, or if you break it down into much smaller steps for each smaller step, what is your knowledge, skill, and knowledge, skill, and awareness gap that exists? And being honest with yourself. No one else has to see this exercise when you do it. It's for your eyes only. Then identify the resources that you would need to close those gaps. They could be people already in your network. It could be outside of your network. These could be processes instead of people. So identify how you can close that gap. And sometimes if you're not quite sure how, that becomes a great opportunity for you to ask for help from your network and say, hey, I have this gap. Does anybody, does anyone know someone who can help me feel more confident on camera, who can help me write more concisely, who can, who's looking for podcast guests? But you get to ask for help. When you know where your gaps are and you, you don't have anyone to fill them, that's a great opportunity for you to ask others. And then they get to help you fill and close those gaps. And then set dates. When you have a plan, a great strategy when you're creating your plan is set a date. Now, sometimes the date, it becomes, well, what if I don't meet the date? And that can, that can sometimes cause some, some overwhelm for people if you get to the date and you haven't achieved the goal. A date is just a date. There's a mindset around this. A date creates a sense of urgency for you to continually take steps towards. At the end of the day, it is a date. Unless you have a hard um, reason and a hard stop on that date, if you're moving towards creating a business or achieving a business and a visibility goal and the date comes, you haven't achieved it, and you can just move the date with the new knowledge and awareness that you have around, I've got this many steps to go. I know now it's going to take me a few more weeks or a few more months. It's just a date at the end of the day. I like to sometimes when, I, when I'm doing visibility work, because I like to set firm dates and then communicate it. If I communicate to my audience, I'm going to show up on this date, that holds me accountable that it helps me to start get, you know, create that plan backwards from that date, so that I can make sure I'm showing up and I'm, I'm actually committed and, uh, and achieve the action and the visibility goal by that date as well. So any questions or any strategies, I'm gonna ask you right now, when we go back to plan, are there any strategies that you use to ensure that you are taking steps towards your business or visibility goals? and have gotten the chat. Asking for help is an important step. Absolutely. And it is a strength. Asking for help, especially as a business owner, is a strength because you're already, we're already wearing how many hats? In a given day, we cannot all wear every single hat. Asking for help allows you to acquire specialized knowledge without you having to learn it. It also allows the other person who's able to help you to really showcase their brilliance and they get to do what, what it is that they love to do in collaboration with and helping you to achieve your goals and being able to do what it is that you wanna do. Okay, so actions. We are at step three right now. So we've already done clarity, 
talked about how to get how to create clarity, how to develop a plan to become more visible, aligning your business and visibility goals. And now the last step is action. We can have a great plan, you can have clarity, but without action, there's no movement forward. There's no momentum created, which means however you've been showing up, however you've been seeing her right now, it's not going to change. In order for you to grow your business, you have to take different actions. You have to be showing up in different places, in different ways. So we're gonna really focus in on that in this step. So question again for you is, do you prefer to take steps or leaps when it comes to taking action on ideas in your business? Steps or leaps? Feel free to share, share in the chat. Again, if you're watching the replay or you need to reflect, then you can kind of pause the replay and, and reflect, grab your, your pen and, and just kind of write down if you prefer steps or leaps. We hear a lot of talk, especially these days, about the quantum leaps, which just seems so big and overwhelming. It becomes, I can't do that. That's too big, too big of a leap. But do you prefer when you're taking action on, on goals in your business to take steps or leaps? I'll check, check the chat. Oh, I often leap, but I feel like steps are more sustainable long term. It's really up to you. And a quote I have, and I like to say is, the bigger the belief, the larger the leap. And so it becomes this sense of belief. So if you have a larger belief in the outcome, in yourself, in other people's belief in you, then we tend to just feel that we have, we can take those bigger steps and whatever the risks are, you'll deal with them. Whatever the unpredictableness is, it's okay. Because you've got this belief that you can, Faith, whatever it is that's going to come and you'll just, you'll figure it out either along the way or afterwards. So the bigger the belief, the larger the leap. Again, a leap is your perspective and your perception of what a leap is. A step for me may be a leap for you. This idea and mindset around steps versus leap, it all comes down to, you know, there's a law of, of relativity. It's all relative to how you see yourself versus others, not from a competition perspective, but just from, from kind of looking at where you are and where others are. Again, where you are in your business and visibility journeys is completely unique to you. How you perceive a step in a leap is very unique to you. So if you see other people, what looks like they're taking leaps, you never know what little steps that they took in order to get there. I think about when I started hosting the C-suite, Get a microbiology degree, no background in media and broadcasting. As you can tell, I maybe tell right now, I love being on camera. I love communicating with you, having conversations and leading conversations. If you go back and look to my season one, episode one, guest one, it's actually still online. I'm not like this. I'm not showing up the same way. But even just to get in front of a camera was a huge leap. I look back right now and I was able to get on camera because I broke it down into a lot smaller steps. I identified what gaps I had and then I took action to help fill those gaps. So I work with different coaches. I did a lot of practicing. I would rewatch myself in order to learn what it is that I liked about my parents or I didn't like about my parents or how I was communicating. So really, and I look back now, like, okay, here I am now. It was a leap, but it was made from a whole bunch of consecutive steps continuously taken over a number of years. I'm gonna check the chat. Yes, I like this idea about a, a visibility buddy, really liking that, often taking leaps, temptation to leap, but sometimes steps are more effective since they provide more time to adjust along the way. Yes, because with every step and with a leap, you're learning, you're gaining knowledge, you're gaining a skill, you're gaining awareness, especially awareness around what do you like to do? What do you not like to do? What do you want more of and to do more of? And what are things you could do without? Yes, every single step is a valuable learning experience and opportunity. And we got, I got a leap. We got a lot of leapers. So uh, yeah, so yeah. But it, but, so again, steps, leaps, completely unique to you. So thank you everyone for, for sharing in the chat. 
So common action problems. One, too much research. So you, you know where your gaps are, you got clear on where you're gonna go, you know what your knowledge, your skill, or your awareness gaps are. Where some clients tend to get stuck is in the research. I wanna close the gaps, so it becomes, well, I, I need to talk to more people. I need to get another uh, certificate or I need to go back to school or it becomes this, I need more data. Sometimes you, we get into analysis paralysis and this can be your fear coming through. These could be your doubts and your worries that are driving your actions and behaviors. And yes, you need some research, market research, exploring, those are really important actions. But there's a difference between, you know, taking, uh, moving forward in the action and completing the action and getting stuck in it and getting in the stuck of the, of, of the cycle. There's a big difference in that and being able to understand what that kind of, what that getting stuck in too much research looks and feels like for you can really help you to create clarity when you're in there and to understand, oh, and recognize this is what I'm doing. I'm getting, I'm getting stuck because there's, there's a fear about taking the action. There's a doubt or there's a worry about me moving forward. So it's easier to stay safe, to stay comfortable, which can be in that analysis paralysis and are getting more data. And, it, and really it can be sometimes when you're doing too much research, you have enough clarity. You may not have as much clarity as you need. And when I go back to clarity, clarity again is based on, on you, you could move forward and create plans and actions when you're clear as mud. And that may be okay for you. Others might need a lot more clarity to be able to fully understand and draw a picture of where it is that they are going, what that next step looks like. Again, clarity is going to be uh, dependent on you. But sometimes if you get stuck not taking action, it could be because the, the clarity, the amount of clarity that you need to connect with may not be there. Another common action problem is visibility unknowns and risks and getting stuck on those. This comes from a lack of knowledge, skill, or awareness, and the risks can be real or they can be perceived risks as well. A lot of times the risks are fear-based because these actions that you're taking, you're stepping outside your comfort zone. There's a fear and excitement, which means there is growth opportunity there. But from there, your mindset could be like, well, there's risk. Well, what if this happens? What if no one shows up to my webinar? What if I have a technology blunder? And they, all these fears could be holding you back. Are, are they risks? Are they real risks? Yes, they could be real risks. They could be other people's perceived risks that you just adopted and actually don't even hold true for you. But at the end of the day, it's all about living beliefs and these beliefs that are holding you back from moving forward, from seeing risks, or even just stopping, seeing them think, well, I, I can't do this because there's a risk. Okay. And then another common action problem is lack of confidence and focusing on the fact that well, I'm not showing up because I don't feel confident. I'm not stepping out and being on camera because I don't, I don't have the confidence yet. Confidence for me, confidence is the outcome of taking actions where you learn. So it is an outcome. And I have a formula around confidence where Confidence comes from when you have belief and you take courageous action and you combine belief with courageous action, that generates confidence. Confidence is the outcome. And the belief that you need to have, it could be a belief in who you are, what you do. It could be the belief in what it is that you are, are doing in your business, that problem you're solving, that need for what it is that you do. Or you could even have belief you believe in other people's belief in you. And as soon as your belief is greater than your fear, your doubt, your worries, and you combine that with courageous action, then you take that step. And you, the confidence comes from taking the step. So it is an outcome. And it's not, not a first step. So it's an outcome. So some action strategies. So some strategies to help you to take those actions. And it could be if, if you're not clear and you're getting stuck in that, I need more data, the analysis paralysis, go back and redo steps one and two. Go back, get clarity. Go back and create that business and connect it to, your vis to a visibility plan and break down those visibility steps and visibility plan into smaller steps. 
identify your knowledge, your skill, your awareness gap. So break all that down to help decrease the risk, the unknowns, the unpredictability of taking steps and doing things you've never done before. The, step, the second strategy is for mindset, really working on developing and strengthening a growth mindset. This could be anything from writing out your goal, your business goal and your visibility goals every single day, having positive affirmations around that next step that you want to take. It could be something as, you know, I'm so happy and grateful now that when I am attending conferences and trade shows, I am confident, I am easily connecting with other attendees and my ideal clientele are continuously flowing in front of me. So things like that. So create affirmations that help to build the mindset to help build the belief, your belief in who you are, what it is that you do and the impact that you want to create. And you can write those out every morning. I like to create affirmations. I record them into my phone. And then if I'm just working away at my computer or making dinner, cutting the lawn, I loop them and I play them. So I'm just continuously thinking about them and really seeing myself and hearing about myself in that end state, having achieved that visibility goal. And the third action strategy is something I call the rule of one. It's all about taking one action at a time. So when you look at your next visibility step, that business goal, a visibility goal that you want to achieve, what is one step that you can take to get 1% better or one step closer to achieving your goal, just one, just one. And some days the reality is just kind of getting up um, is, is your one action. Other days you may finish an action and say, what's next? And you're excited to get into what's next. That's okay if you take the next one. But looking at what is that one step, breaking down the overwhelm into much smaller, more tangible, and sometimes more realistic steps as well. One, that's it, one step. And then you lift your action out, reflect on them. So another strategy is if you have all these different actions that you want to take, sometimes it becomes, I don't know, again, how, wh which one should I take first? A strategy is on a piece of paper, write out all of the different actions that you can take around being seen and heard. Put on a piece of paper and then cover up all of the actions and just pull the put a piece of paper on, on top, you know, one, one on top of the other, and then pull that piece of paper down. So you're only really seeing the one action at a time. Assign a number to that action, one being low, 10 being really high. And that number is related to how excited do you feel about taking that action? When you see that action written on a piece of paper, oh, like, yeah, I kind of get excited, a little bit scared, but I feel excited about taking that action. Write down that number and go one by one. When you're done, look at your list and pick an action that had one of the highest rated numbers next to it. Because you were excited to do that one. When you have that excitement, even with a little bit of fear, that excitement helps with the belief, it helps to take the courageous action which builds the confidence. That's another strategy of when you get stuck on, I don't know what step to take, that's a strategy that you can, you can implement. A quick review, we talked about clarity. So in order to be seen, heard, found, and hired, first step is to create clarity. Again, clarity is as clear as you need it to be. Sometimes wherever you are in your business or visibility journeys, you're going to need a whole lot of clarity. Other times, clear as mud. Again, it's going to shift and change depending on where you are. So to get clarity, give yourself some reflection time. With this webinar, again, watch the replay. Press pause when you when we have those reflection questions and just spend the time getting really clear uh, around what it is that you, you want and how you want to be visible, where you want to be visible, in front of who. Then ask yourself the hard questions. And when you answer them, be very honest with yourself. That's going to help you to create and move into the next step and to create a plan, a visibility plan that is feeling fully aligned to who you are, where you are and where you're going. Because you've asked yourself the hard questions, you've given yourself the clear answers and now you get to take the next step, which is creating a plan around the clarity that you have. So focus on your internal versus external guidance, what feels good to you versus what you're hearing and seeing other people doing, but don't necessarily feel 
right for you. And that's okay. It all comes about aligning things and creating alignment in how you want to show up because then more of you shows up when you feel good about it, even if you're a little bit scared. Okay. And then again, all the plan that you, the steps you take are all about where you are in your business and visibility journey. And lastly, action. It can be inspired or strategic. That's where the focus or flexible or focus yet flexible plan comes from. Because sometimes you'll just have this idea and this inspiration that comes to you about, oh, what if you just reached out to this person and asked them for help or asked them a question and you take action on it? How many times have you done that? All of a sudden it opens this door of opportunity because you took this inspired action. So you, action is inspired or strategic. So again, being focused yet flexible and just hearing things, seeing things, kind of opportunities. And even if you're scared, taking them. If, as long as they align, as long as that opportunity, that action, that person aligns to that business and visibility goal, take action because you never know what's going to happen. And again, the last piece is, and we talked about this and it showed up in the chat, ask for help. When you're getting stuck, when you're not clear, or when you're super clear and you're moving towards that visibility goal, ask for help from people. Because when you're excited about achieving something and you ask for people for help, even could be, you know, I've, I've got this event coming up, I've got a workshop, or I'm going to this trade show. Can you share, ask others to share what it is that you're doing? People who are aligned with you and your vision, they're going to be excited to share that for you and be a part of that visibility and business journey with you. Ask for help. It's amazing how many doors and opportunities and how much easier things can be when you ask for help. Because not only do you get to show up, but others that you're asking the help from, they get to show up and they get to help. How often have you been able to help others? And it just feels so good. When you ask for help, you allow others to have that feeling of, you know, they're helping. So they're doing something that feels really good. Another quote I like to say is where you start is not where you will stay. So where you are today is not going to be where you are going to stay in your business and visibility journey. And so that is, that is it. So thank you for, for engaging in the conversation in the chat, for watching the replay. And I really can't wait to see how you becoming more visible. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of your business and visibility journey. Thank you so much, Danielle. I will hand it over to Sarah to see if we have any questions. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So while everyone's thinking of their questions, um, we did get a question that was submitted in advance uh, from Julie who asks, do cold calls still work? Oh, that's interesting. So, I, and I'd love to hear anyone else in the chat. Uh, please share your experience with, with cold calls. And for me, I have to say when, I'll talk about when I receive cold calls. So it becomes, if the person sends it, like the uh, cold call being a cold DM as well, if it just becomes, if it's conversational, that I am about conversation. So if you're going to, for me, if someone's going to cold call me and I got an email this morning from someone who did their research about me, sent me an unsolicited email. And I thought, you know what? I and I responded, I, I didn't need their help right now, but I called out in my response back to them, thank you for doing research about me. I'm not needing this help at this point in time, but I appreciate you connecting and I wish you all the best. So because sometimes I don't, when you reach out to people, they don't necessarily need you right now. However, I think when you come with that sense of, of increase and leaving others with that sense of increase versus I, I, you know, I, I wanna you know, get you on as a client, how you come across and that intention behind the visibility activity can really make a huge difference. So if you do a cold call, for me, it's the, what is the intention behind the action and leave the other person with that, in, that impression of increase, that somehow they are better off just by getting the email from you. And yeah. So yeah, but yeah, so that that's my experience with it. And I've done it and I come at it the same way where, you know, this is who I am, no pressure, just wanted to kind of throw this out there again with this idea around the impression of increase. 
That's great. Thank you. Um, and Jane in the chat has put in a couple questions. So I'll read the first one out here. Um, what platform or media, in your opinion, is the most powerful and important um, across all industries for visibility, such as IG, Facebook, in-person networking, that kind of thing? And in other words, is there one that trumps them all in terms of visibility, or is it just consistency on one platform? That's a great question. Great question, Jane. Jane. So for me, it become it. So you, there's always data on who your you know who your ideal audience is and understanding where do they spend the most time. And for me, it becomes. I like to say when you're starting on becoming more visible on any new platform, or you're already on a platform where you're trying to grow your visibility. I kind of have an unpopular opinion in the fact that I say start where you're most comfortable. You know, if you look at maybe you're really strong on Facebook and Instagram, but your ideal audience from a data perspective is on LinkedIn, but you're not quite sure how to, how to do that. And you're trying to grow your, you know, just your increase and, and put yourself out there. And you're not quite sure how to do it on LinkedIn. Practice where you already are, where you already have an audience and a following and learn from that. And then once you get more comfortable and confident in one platform, then move over to another platform and start from there. And if you're moving over to another platform, let people know on where you initially are saying, hey, I'm heading over here. I'm going to go grow my visibility over here or connect with me over here and bring people along that journey with you. So for me, there's no one best. It becomes where do you feel the most aligned? Where, where, do you, where are you most comfortable right now? And then where is your ideal audience? And then how do you navigate towards that? Also, because the fact that at the end of the day, you only have so much time, unless you have a team and someone is managing all of your social media for you. If you're everywhere, it means everyone, like you, you kind of feel the pressure to be everywhere on all the platforms, respond to all the comments and platforms. Every platform has a DM. Like for me, I, I came off of, of, of social media platforms. I'm only really on LinkedIn and Instagram because that's all the bandwidth I have from a professional perspective for my audience, they're on LinkedIn and they're also on Instagram. And honestly, a lot of women I love to follow are typically only on Instagram. So that I stick to those two platforms. But when I started becoming more visible and stepping out, LinkedIn was where I was the most comfortable. That's where I started. And then I eventually I went to, to Instagram. So a little bit of a, a different opinion and experience on that. Great question. Great. And I think related to that, um, unless you have anything else to say about this topic, um, there's also a question, is it true that being on too many platforms can be problematic? But I do think you touched on that in the end there. Um, and then uh, Jane's final question was, what is the best way to get invited onto podcasts as a guest, in your opinion? Oh, that's a great question, too. So podcasts, they're, so one, a great way to um, to get invited onto podcasts is one, you have to make yourself visible to podcast hosts in order for them to know that, again, you want to be seen and heard in order to be found and then brought in as a guest. So you have to somehow become more visible to them. This could include what is your favorite podcast that you love listening to? Listen to an episode, give it a rating, comment, and then you could always, podcast hosts, they have a website, they have a way to contact them, contact them. And just let them know you listened to an episode or a podcast and you said it really connected with me. If you're ever looking for guests who talk about this, I'd love to be able to come and provide value to your audience. Again, coming from that place of, of service, wanting to help, leaving with the impression of increase. And it lets a podcast host know that you've done your homework. It's not just, hey, I want to come on your show. It's I want to come on the show because you talk about the things that I align with, that we have common audiences and it, so things like that but that's one way to do it there's also um, a lot of different groups in different social media platforms specifically related to podcasting become a member of those groups interact with the community interact with the podcast hosts when they put out requests and just again you have put put yourself out there be seen and heard and doing it from the place of service providing value and providing others with that sense of increase Thanks, Danielle. That was really great. And unless anybody has any other questions that are coming through in the chat here, um, I'll hand it back to you, Adelaide.
Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you so much, Danielle. You shared a ton of very valuable information today. I took some notes about, you know, being visible means different things to different business owners, reflecting on the unique value that you bring to your customers, connecting your visibility goals and how you show up with attaining your business goals um, and tapping into your network to ask for help. I also saw that there were a few comments in the chat about the importance of accountability partners, accountability buddies um, in your business. So thank you so much for all of that. Um, if anyone on the call today would like to connect with Danielle, please reach out to Sarah and myself for an introduction and we'll let you know some options for, for connecting with her. Before you all disappear, Sarah will post a very brief feed back form into the chat. Please click on that and share your thoughts uh, on today's session, as well as the Toolkit Tuesday series in general. If there's a topic that you would like to present on, please do let us know. Feel free to follow us on social media and tweet or post about your experience uh, and your learnings today. Again, a sincere thank you to Danielle, to our assigned interpreters, Samantha and Liz, to our sponsors, to Sarah, and to all of you here today. Thanks so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you again on the screen soon. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.